Hi guys, welcome to another Living SATB video. Dave is here and guess what guys, today we're gonna show you the investment of 90 million rand that was done here at the Vitz Anglo-American Digital Dome right here in Johannesburg CBD guys. Don't you believe me? Stay tuned because once again this video will blow your mind. The University of Witwatersrand or WITS, an Anglo-American, have transformed the Johannesburg Planetarium into the WITS Anglo-American Digital Dome with a 90 million rand investment or close to 5 million dollars. This refurbishment includes state-of-the-art digital projection and sound systems, offering a 360-degree immersive experience for visitors. The new facility will serve as a modern teaching venue and collaborative research space, supporting various scientific disciplines, from astrophysics to digital arts. The Digital Dome is the largest of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere and aims to inspire and educate visitors of all ages. You guys can see next to the highway a lot of parking also. Good morning, I'm Dr. Momi Taich. I'm from the Wits Anglo-American Digital Dome, so I'm the head. Uh, so what you see here, the building is still the same one from 1960s. Uh, so the planetarium first opened the door on 12th of October 1960 and um, yeah so the main uh, building was this and there has been a lot of extension on this side this was uh, possible by the partnership between Wits University and Anglo American the mining company uh, so you see obviously the building has changed a lot uh, on that side so uh, we got our new offices and there is a seminar room and um, it's a little more for, uh, available space for having events and stuff but uh, we also have plans for phase three which was basically where uh, a unit which is still not funded but we are still looking for funds for it um, for a, like a more um, area for like content development so making our own multimedia content and stuff like that um, the other thing which has changed is apart from inside the planetarium where we have new projectors which I'll show you just now but it's also changed in the terms of the roles so the roles of a planetarium was mostly for showing astronomy shows uh, for entertainment and learning but we are also adding research and teaching um, into this uh, whole new system so you can do a lot of research in matters of data visualization and it doesn't have to be only astronomy uh, so data visualization and also you can use the dome for teaching purposes also you will have a glimpse of it hopefully later um, so you can come through please so as you can see these doors are still the original doors from the planetarium and all the all the glass which you have the constellations these are all from this has not, nothing has been touched in there and you can see all the original clocks of the architects who had uh, built the planetarium. And so this is the foyer. So this is the foyer area which was again the original and the structure ended there. And that's what the extension is now. We've kept all of these as it is like you can see the marble there that's also from the old olden times from 1960s and uh, yeah the doors are also the original doors uh, but what has changed is basically what is inside so inside when you go you will see there's a lot of uh, changes in terms of seating and also the projection capabilities of the system um, so maybe we can go inside and have a look come through okay okay you can come through so previously what we had was obviously the seats were slightly different the orientation was different the seats were all surrounding uh, the dome and you had a single projector in the center here so that projector was a Zeiss projector analog projector built in the 1930s 
and it was um, it was originally in Hamburg in Germany and then um, in 1960s 58 the city of Joburg was celebrating its 70th uh, anniversary I would say and then uh, they decided to um, make an upliftment and have this dome in the city which is an amazing idea I think and then they purchased the projector from Hamburg for, uh, and uh, they got it here uh, so this was in in the 60s but the technology of the Zeiss projector is very different um, and people who have seen it before they still have fond memories of what the planetarium was before and um, yeah and I also come from a time when I when I was a child I used to go to a planetarium which was not so modern and uh, it still was an amazing experience but you can see how much the technology has changed um, we will show you something on the dome so that you can take some videos yeah so instead of that single Zeiss projector what you now have is you can see all these projectors so there's 10 of them so 10 of them surrounding the dome each of them have 4k resolution on its own but once they project onto the dome together the 10 of them will give you 8.6k resolution which is quite amazing uh, given the size of the dome um, you will see that the images are uh, quite amazing and also apart from the images like the projectors we've got an upgraded sound system so the sound system is now surround sound with 8.2 audio channels which means there's like eight speakers all around and then two subwoofers um, so this kind of projections with the 10 projectors and the surround sound what you get is something which we call the immersive experience immersive 360 degree experience so you can see 360 degree immersive because you feel like you're part of the show uh, like when you're moving through the Milky Way you feel like you're part of the show okay guys let's get ready now for the immersive experience inside of the planetarium your day is 24 hours right so I'm going to fast forward your one whole day, 24 hours and 3 minutes. So you'll see how the sun moves in the sky. It's quite amazing when all the lights are turned off. So let's get closer to sunset, which is probably at 6 o'clock, something 6 o'clock around 6 o'clock. So you can see closer to sunset, you can see more stars, you can see Jupiter hanging, coming up which is very cool for schools, kids, as I'm pretty sure even adults would enjoy it. So that's what it looks like. And then we are back to sunrise, close by. So this is what Jupiter would look like from close by. But what I'm going to do is turn on the constellations. Because it's quite... Wow! And then you can... Rotate it along. Oh my word! So you can uh, do uh, like a, it takes you to Saturn immediately, but what we are doing is we're kind of traveling from Jupiter to Saturn, and this is what you see. Oh wow! And similarly, you can zoom in a bit more. There you go. <laughs> you can zoom in further. And what you will see now is birth. Oh! Oh wow! There's basically rocks. We just hit it by asteroids. <laughs> yeah, it's it's this is what it is. This is what the rings look like. Oh my word! Ooh. Oh yes. wow! It's very hard to control with the mouse, but it's much better with the Xbox. Ooh. That's what it looks like. Oh wow! Right. So you can um, zoom into Mars and. You can get a much more detailed view of de detailed view of the surface on Mars. So oh things like that you can do. So the, these are all the astronomy um, things which you can do as part of a live show uh, for kids, and obviously you can do it for adults also. So this is now you're currently on Mars, and then to Mars, and then explore the planet, and things like that. It's uh, quite far away. This is what it looked like. Uh, so Halley's comet. The last time it was closest to the sun was in 1986. That is uh, Capricorn. These are things which is very, I think, uh, kids will definitely enjoy quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so a nebula is basically something which is um, a, a region in the region in the universe where new stars are born. 
So this is what it looks like. So this is the Eagle Nebula. Um, wow. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. And there are other nebulas uh, called, suppose, the Crab Nebula. So this is what the Crab Nebula would look looks like in the sky. So these are again regions where new stars are formed. Um, so this is what it looks like. Your stationary satellites. Uh, you can see we are zooming away, zooming out, and you see that's the ring which you, which I said. That's the geostationary satellites. And let's move further away from the Earth, and you will be able to see. Um, so that's basically the Earth and the Moon, and you can see all the other planets. So that's the planets, other planets. I have not kept the labels. So this is basically Jeez. your um, Milky Way. No, not yet actually. Uh, yeah, it's now out of the Milky Way. Um, these are um, some things which are called um, uh, Kepler planets. So um, planets, uh, Kepler uh, mission data. So you can see, and then you can go further, and then you can see um, wow. so Milky Way. Wow. That's your Milky Way. And can we, you will soon see the other galaxies. Can we go to Andromeda? Yes, there's Andromeda there. Oh my, wow. So that's what gravitational lensing is doing. And then you are moving further up. And this is something which is quite cool. So this is something which is known as a supercluster. Uh, it's called the Lanikia. Yeah. So it's something called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, so SDSS. Um, so what you can see now is, and you can move around in, in 3D, so these are all galaxies. Um, so this, these are all galaxies? Yes. You're joking. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. So what you can see this is this, uh, um, it has, uh, the SDSS survey comes in this triangular patch. That's just because we are looking from Earth, right? And uh, this is the field of view which you see. And that's what you see here. So you're looking at uh, from Earth in two two directions, two cones like these. So that's what the SDSS is. So this is again all real data. Um, so you can move around, play around, uh, go through them again. We already did that once, but that's how it looks like. Okay. And then if you zoom out further, what you will reach is something which is known as the cosmic microwave background. So if you move further, uh, this is what you see. So this is something which is known as the cosmic microwave background. What it basically is, is a remnant radiation from the Big Bang. So it's nice to be back home. <laughs> okay, so the extension of the building is this way. So you can come through. So we've got our office space is here, uh, currently it's two of us. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, constant who's uh, very busy. So they are from the YouTube channel, which I mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go and have a look and maybe. So we've just got a fire area and uh, we have a seminar room, boardroom which is mainly for our meetings. And if it's a small class, people can actually train their students here also. But if it's a bigger class, we can do that inside the dome also. Yeah, so that is mainly the space. There's an upstairs area which we usually use for events and stuff. Till now, whatever events we've had has been internal, but we are having external events like corporate functions and things like that. And um, yeah, so we're going to use this area more for that purpose yeah
And there you go guys, we are done with the video. Now you know about our beautiful planetarium right here in sunny Johannesburg. Again, make sure you share, subscribe and destroy that like button. And I will see you in the next Living SATV video.